So with that, please give uh, Senator Desinato a very warm Iowa Federation of Labor Law.
this meeting meets across the hall in the house. And I look at the agenda that we have an opportunity to move, and it's nothing. It's really nothing. Because we know there's no opportunity. There's no air in the house. One of my representatives, Representative Hunter, sitting in the back of the room, might as well be a prisoner of war. They have no say. They have absolutely no input. He's filed a number of good bills this year that will never reach the Senate Labor Committee. And so our agenda is very simple this year. One is we're on defense from what the House would like and the governor. But we're asking for very minimal to advance the very basics of human rights and human dignity, wage theft. Honestly, God, wage theft. We're talking about employers that literally steal from the very lowest paid workers in the state of Iowa with absolutely no punitive damages. <coughs> they get the money back if they're caught, and then they move on to steal from the next employee. And that's not easy to pass. I believe today or tomorrow we'll pass it on a committee. We'll debate it, pass it on the floor, but then we'll go over to, over to the House Labor and Business Committee and die. Minimum wage. Why are we even arguing about minimum wage? The very lowest and vulnerable of our society to make it. And they, they try to address it as something that, oh, basically wealthy, retired people on pensions working at McDonald's, and they just do it for the hell of it. I don't want any people working at McDonald's for the hell. And kids, I had an association come in and talk to me last Thursday about setting up a two-tier minimum wage because he said we hire a lot of a lot of 15, 16, and 17 year olds, and you know they don't need that much money. It's not really, you know, it's not important to them. I said, where the hell do you live? He said, I live on the south side of the morning, the southeast side of the morning. And I know that Lincoln High School that has over 2,000 students can barely put 35 kids on the field for a football team because these kids are working. And they're not working for their spring break to Cancun. They're not working for that new car. They're working to help, in most cases, their single mothers pay the rent and pay the utilities and keep the family going. Or they save their money because they know they have to pay every nickel to get to some type of higher training after high school. So when you can't even relate to people as far as the worlds that we come from, it's very difficult to move any kind of quote progressive legislation because we're still in the fundamentals, the economics. And so our minimum wage. All you've heard is 10, 10 an hour. Well, the Iowa Senate is going to be sending a bill out money for $8.75 an hour. That's sad. That's the best we can do. Because even in our caucus of 26, we have marginal members that are very vulnerable in re-election. And so we even have to concede within our caucus to be able to pass any kind of democratic agenda. But the fact that we don't even know that the House of Representatives will take up a bill of 875 is pathetic. I'll run it because I'm not the one to judge what $60 a week means for $3,500 a year that person that has nothing and is starving at the end of every payday. 875 after two years. That's the best we can offer the working poor. And we know who they are. They may be our family. Immigrants. My father. These are the people still being prayed upon in America after 1930. When wealth has grown incredibly, and all to about the same people, they still deny the very poorest of the society. And that's all you have to defend you is three Democrats. Three Democrats against that way. And as I read the paper, I read the news that the Koch brothers have already pledged one billion dollars to the next wave of elections. 
back to grow because if we don't grow, we're diminishing the opportunity and the dream every day in this country. It's dying, and it's not dying because people aren't getting it, it's dying because people don't believe it. That's the most tragic part of the American story today. Is that people don't believe that the American dream is possible. I live in it. It's supposed to get better. Education. The house is, is, is passed in the annual percent, 1.25%, I believe, for K through 12 education. The only tool that equalizes everyone. And they're attacking that public school system. The Senate has proposed 4%. We could probably be there until July. We prefer to do 6 but economically we can't because the Iowa legislature two years ago, at the urging of the governor and the Republican majority in the House, cornered the Senate into compromise of a commercial property tax cut that is so overwhelming that we have nothing left for our priorities. Now I support commercial property tax cuts for small business and it probably should have been doubled. But we gave it to the largest out-of-state corporations in Iowa national corporations and some international corporations to the tune of almost a billion dollars in four years. We're giving as much to commercial property tax cuts as we are in education this year. So not only are they attacked us from the top by taking for their tax cuts, they're attacked us from the very bottom which is education, the fundamental equalizer. Brothers and sisters of labor, we're under attack. And at a time that more people are going into poverty and more people are moving from the middle class to the lower middle class, when seniors are losing their homes to taxes in poverty, because pensions have been taken away by the private sector. At a time when this country is spiraling down, more people are voting Republican. More people are voting Republican. Because they take the labor movement and they divide it. They divide you from your neighbor on the most ridiculous, nonsensical social issues. That mean nothing in reality. But in return, divide us and conquer us. We have to stop the division. Everyone has a moral compass. Everyone has some religion. Even atheists believe in something, but there's no right religion. In gay marriage, I want someone to tell me that since gay marriage came into the state of Iowa, that somehow your marriage has been affected. But it's dividers on rhetoric. Abortion. Ronald Reagan opposed abortion back when he was president and the majority of Congress and never did one damn thing to stop it because it works for them. They don't want to resolve those issues because they keep working people Minorities hate minorities. A subclass of worker despising another individual who may get some public assistance to the tune of basic food stamps to feed their kids, and in most cases, 60 percent is single mothers with children. Now, who resents that in this room? That's what we fight for. We're fighting now for a bill of economic development that just allows for transportation in rural Iowa to help people get to work at night. And the Republicans think that's somehow another entitlement. 
But if we don't help the person get to work and pay taxes, we never get them off the public assistance. And remember, most people struggling today are women and children, single mothers, abandoned by the fathers. It's a sad statement, but that's who we're really supporting. Immigrants, the future of this country, it's always had been. We don't have enough workers, and even numbers in the state of Iowa, in 20 years to supply the workforce. So we have a new stream of immigrants, documented or undocumented, they're here. So what do we do? We starve them, do we keep them uneducated, do we push them on the public rolls because we're not going to watch them wither and die? Now that we've educated, do we deport them? That's what some propose. The fact of the matter is, this country is a country of immigrants. My father was an immigrant. I'm standing here today fighting for the labor movement because I understand that life. I don't know how many American Indians are out there. The rest of them just come over some way. I've been longer than the rest of us. And you got here some way. And if my father could have swam from Italy, he would have got here sooner. It was a little too far instead of swimming across the Rio Grande. But this desperation, this desperation and poverty and wanting the one thing that we can't let die, that's the American dream. Everybody wants it. We still have some semblance of it. We need to rebuild it. So don't let them divide you based on all this nonsensical social issue. The fundamental issue is the rich who stole this country, they continue to steal this country, and they let us fight over in the corner while they're taking the very last crumb of the economics.
Why would you want to take a test saying after a state of sworn into the nation and education? That's where we've slipped through all the years of Grant Stanton's administration and Republican control. So it's time that we focus on what's important, and what's important is what's going to help the very lowest workers of this state, which is education, retraining, wages, pensions, benefits. Don't be divided on anything else. Keep your neighbor focused. Thank you very much, Iowa Federation.